Good morning, warriors, and you know what day it is. It is Queen's Challenge Day. So with my crown, I put on, and as you can see, Judah's not here. She'll be here, maybe. Sometimes queens take their time and they're fashionably late, adjusting their crownage, maybe getting a little tea, maybe spilling a little tea, not sure. But anyways, welcome to another episode of Two Girls and a Pea. And uh, today we are going to speak a bit about empowerment. And no, sorry, that is not. It is expectations. See, the crown gives me empowerment, so that kind of came first. But anyways, but it is definitely about expectations. Expe expectations in all areas of your life, but I want to start out, out with relationships, friendships, intimate ones, work relationships. What are your expectations? For me, the bar is high. Um, mostly because I hold myself accountable and I hold myself to a higher expectation. So therefore, I expect those that are very close to me or those that are working with me to hold themselves accountable uh, to hold themselves in a higher regard I think it makes for a better relationship when the expectations are there um, but then where does it get where does the line draw between judgment and expectation because I'm not gonna judge you if you're not doing the same things that I'm doing of course um, but I do want to align myself with those that are leveling up. And I would definitely say that for, you know, my personal relationship, Jude's here. Yay. She looks so cute. Morning queens. Look at her. Mm. We were just speaking about expectations. I said empowerment because I was wearing the crown and yeah. then I got back into the, yeah in uh, expectations and I was telling them in all areas of yeah. um of expectations whether it's friendships good. thank you I'm, I'm glittery I'm glittery I like I like the stripes okay. um so intimate relationships friendships work relationships your associates you know mm -hmm. what are your expectations and I was just telling our our warriors out there that my expectations are high because I hold myself to a higher level. Mm -hmm. So therefore, anyone's that, anyone that I work with or have interpersonal relationships with, I hold them to the same level because one, I'm not gonna ask you to do anything for me that I wouldn't or I haven't done for you mm -hmm. 10 times over. So, but it's not tit for tat because I'm not gonna usually, you know, maybe what you needed from me is not what I need from you. It may be right. something totally different, right? And if it's going to benefit the relationship or benefit the workspace or whatever setting you're in, I think the expectations are there. But then before you walked in, I said, where, do, you know, where does that fine line come in between mm -hmm. judgment and expectation? Are you going to judge the people that haven't leveled up to you know what your expectations are? And I was telling them, that I don't mm -hmm. hold you in judgment, but it's not in alignment with my vision of how, you know, I want our friendship or our intimate um, relationship or mm -hmm. even our working relationship to be. I think because that ends up putting a strain on it, don't you think, or or no? Yes and yes. Um, I would. I'm I'm listening to you, and. You know, we've talked about this even this week, you know, just self-mastery. And, you know, that terminology has come onto the scene more recently. Oh, People gosh, are doing yes. self-mastery classes. And, you know, as in my Reiki Master training, we talked a lot about self-mastery. Um, and I think that, well, I know that you have such a high level of self-mastery. In your life and I think that's part of it is the it's not just 
the it's the quality of people that you want in your life, but it's also the quality of relationship exactly. that you want in your life. It's it's about quality, yeah, and the quality that you want in your life, whether it's business, mm-hmm. personal, right. And, you know, that's why you're setting the bar up here. I have always tended to to be the same. And yet that I was accepting for myself. Yeah. And then accepting so much down here. Right. That I had to learn. Now, you know, that that's not what I want in my life. Were you aware that you were that you were settling for this versus what you wanted or? You know, it's it's weird. You would think that I was because. I, but it's almost like there was um, a disconnect because I was doing this and yeah. this was happening and I was, it was like I couldn't figure that out, like that I was just accepting, mm-hmm. you know, until I did, right? And then I did. I I woke up, eyes open, you know, it was one of part of my awakening, continual awakening processes. Oh, I'm accepting that. And I don't have to. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to. Exactly. Uh, Do you think that came more to the forefront with your divorce mm-hmm. or or as you were understanding it was coming to an end? When do you think you were like, uh, probably, I mean, because you were married for a long time. Yeah. And, and yeah, and, 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 and in a belief system where you just stay. Yeah. So that was fed into part of that. Right. But once I made that choice, then the ripple of choosing for myself, you know, mm-hmm. went into all the relationships. Right. You know, so it was as soon as I made that choice. Right. And stepped out of that. So at my separation. So you know, what are your expectations now? My expectations now, I am... In some ways, you know, nobody would use the term brutally, but I'm brutally honest. Yeah. So I like that in my relationships. And I I really don't understand not being so. Uh, I, my expectations, you know why? Because honesty, if you're not being honest in your relationships, you're not allowing the other person to make a choice. I don't want anybody to take my choices away. True. And in that same line of thought, I don't want someone to be under a guise where they feel they can't make a choice about me professionally Mm -hmm. or intimate wise. I don't want to intimidate someone into feeling that they have to accept my level of expectations. I Mm -hmm. really, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want that at all. Um, You know, and I have, I think I have said that in my friendships and that's where, yeah, the brutality of honesty comes in. I'm like, look, you know what? I'm not for everyone. You know what? And, and I'm okay with that. I am more than okay with that. Only because I understand when I look in the mirror, what I, you know, what my flaws are, what my, you know, golden stars are, but more importantly, what my flaws are. And they are not accepting, you know, to to a lot of people, but I have enough redeeming and lovely qualities, I think, um, that the people that I surround myself with can understand my quirks and I can understand theirs. And then there is no judgment. Mm-hmm. And and, yeah. and don't get me wrong. We all judge. I get that. I totally get that. Um, on some level or not, you know, we have opinions about mm-hmm. certain things. So... You know, for me, I want them to have a choice to step away from me if they don't, you know, mm-hmm. if they're like, you know, Yvette, you're just too much, you know. Ugh. Um, and like you just said, I love, you know, get full disclosure, brutality, however, honesty, whatever you want to call it, you know, we have to um, align ourselves with that truth so we can make our own choices as well. Right. And I think the other couple of things that I require, <laughs> and not everybody does, is I'm a very deep person. Yeah. So it is very difficult for me to maintain a relationship that is that doesn't go deep. 
that doesn't talk deep, that doesn't delve deep, right? you know, and just kind of stays at this level, that is difficult for me. So I have people in my life that are like that, but they're just going to be more in the outer circles. It's not that I don't appreciate them. Right. You know, it's just... I have to go super deep. I'm, I'm a vulnerable person, so I like that vulnerability and that knowing. For me, each person is a universe unto their own to explore, and I like to explore. Right, exactly. And then the other thing would be being really, truly heart-centered, rooted and grounded in in love mm -hmm. and understanding of, of how to come at life through a lens of love. Right, Without question. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it, it softens the honesty. It's They're going to be really honest with me, but through a lens of love, because they're telling me the truth, because they love me, they're going to, they're going but to, a, you know. But the truth according to whom? The truth according to them, mm -hmm. or how they see you, or, I mean, because their truth doesn't necessarily make it truth. Right. Right. But no, but their or... truth. I need to understand their truth. And oh, I see what we can because of the love that we can talk about it. Right. We can have those hard, difficult com confrontations. Right. And come to an, an understanding. And right. sometimes that we may understand to go separate ways. Right. But there's still love in that mix. So you can go separate ways cleanly. Right. And those are the kinds of people, the quality of people that I want in my life. Right. Exactly. And I like the way you said, you know, and on the outskirts, you know, you still have those that you, you know, mm -hmm. um, you have to work with and coexist with, you know, on, but on a different level. Mm -hmm. You understand that you may not necessarily have them over for intimate dinner parties or whatever the case may be, right. uh, but you learn to coexist. And, yeah. and I think that's the thing that's missing in today's world is you know the co yeah that co part and i think that that comes from that having that lens of love because i understand and knowing yourself really well i understand in a sense their place in my story in my life mm -hmm. and i may not be super close or important as some others in their story right for sure you know but we still play a part in each other's story we still exactly. have roles to play exactly and i honor and respect that and i love them at right. that in that place of my story right and they me and and so it's this understanding of how our stories are to work together mm -hmm. and staying in our lanes and not trying to make somebody more than what they're supposed to be right right allowing them to be who they're supposed to be exactly I think that's probably a very good empowerment of a queen, you know, knowing that, you know, you can sit back, understand your expectations, understand other people's expectations, mm -hmm. and those that are not in line with yours still can work and play and still have, you know, um, whatever that relationship is. But understanding, you know, that it's not perhaps on a deeper level, but you can still coexist because I think right. knowledge is power, you know, um, and to get to know those people, you know, at their level of expectations or what they mm -hmm. want, you know, is not okay, now, you know, now you understand if you want to align yourself with them, you know, through work, through friendship, you know, through other, you know, other vessels. I think that's always great. It's always great when right. you can have a choice. You know, and I don't know if there's any times when we don't have a choice. I mean, the only time I think would be under extreme situations where you're taken hostage. And I mean, literally hostage, physically hostage, yeah. where, you know, you no longer can, you know, speak for yourself or, you know, get out there and do something. Um, but I think sometimes we make our own, you know, hostage situation. We hold ourselves hostage. Yes. When we're not living our truth and leveling up to our expectations of, you know, what we, what we want in life. I don't know. Yeah. Why, agreed. why do we not go for what we want in life? You know, right. we have a lot of, you know, noise in the background saying, well, it can't be done. Or do you know how many people are trying to do that? You know, um, you know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. you don't have a degree to do it, or you yeah. don't have a high school diploma to do it, or, you know, you, you know, you, I don't know, maybe you have a checkered past or whatever the case may be, 
you still can rise to the occasion. Those expectations still never leave you. But, you know, society tends to kind of beat you down sometimes of mm -hmm. mistakes that you may have made um, for various reasons, good, bad, or indifferent, um, and won't give you that opportunity to meet your expectations. So that's why I say in so many of our shows, you know, where there is not a door, make one for yourself. You have to. And it's often, imperative. energetically, with those dreams, it is, you know, there's, everybody hears about the law of attraction. We don't rarely hear about the law of action. Right. And so it's when you say yes, and you take that, those first steps of action, that you're actually shifting things to oh, yeah. come to you, to make those doors open. Right. You know, by taking that step, mm -hmm. it's like. It's like the universe is just waiting for you to take a step, mm -hmm. to take a step, you know. And uh, what there was something that you were saying. I oh, now I can't. Even, I was like, oh, that's so good, mm -hmm. that's so good. And I wanted to highlight a point, and now I can't remember all. Oh. Okay, if it was, it wasn't really that good. If you can't remember. Oh no, it was good. Or maybe you need some ginkgo biloba. I don't know <laughs> that memory. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, but, I, I know it had to do with alignment and yeah. and purpose and knowing those for yourself for sure. makes these choices easier. Yeah. Oh, I know. Attachment. Yeah. You know, sometimes we get attached to an idea of somebody or an idea that we think, you know, that, that how somebody's going to fit in our life. Right. And... You, you know, want it end, so bad. We end up trying to put them into this box, and it's not who they are, and we we're, we end up in relationships where we are not in alignment. True. And that's kind of where a lot of the trouble starts. Toxicity. And we, because of our attachments, we don't know how to let go very well and let them be who they're supposed to be and move on and be happier and you be happier. You know, so, yeah. you know, sometimes I, I'll do like an attachment check in my relationships yeah. and see... Are, am I being um, in a place of non-attachment with them? I like to hold my relationships like this, yeah, like a bird in the hand. And I love that bird. Whoever that bird is mm -hmm. in whatever the relationship, mm -hmm. I just love, love, love them. And because I keep my hand open, they are able to fly away anytime they need to. And I will still love them. That's quite generous. And, and I can loving. also let them go if I need to. Right. And I will still love them. Well, can you? Can yeah. you let them go? That's what I'm saying if you do, do your attachment check. So when do you fight for a relationship, a friendship, you know, a, a business working relationship? It, should you ever fight for it? The way I would fight for it would probably be different. It would still be open hand. Yeah. But I would say to them, if I still want that person in my life, yeah. then I'm going to be very honest, the brutal honesty, and say, mm -hmm. I want you in my life. Is there something wrong? You know, what? Let's talk. Mm -hmm. And through that conversation, you find out, can they stay in the hand or are they going to fly away? Or are you going to let them go? Right? Yeah. Because it's the needed conversation usually will reveal whether the bird should stay or go. What if, okay, let's speak on an intimate level. Mm -hmm. So you're with this person mm -hmm. and... There is just like a key factor, let's say a sexual factor, mm -hmm. that on every other level you mm -hmm. are connecting on, but, you know, in the intimate realm of things, it just isn't. And, and let's, let's, let's clean it up by saying it's not because of anything medical. Right. It's not because some, something tragic not... happened. It's just not connecting. Okay. So do you surrender because your level of expectations are... It, you know, this is what you want, and it fills it fills a need. It fills a you know a hole. Yeah. Um, do you do you do you let it go, or do you just say, well, you know what? There is nine points that that he's or she is checking off, but mm -hmm. you know, but one is not. What do you do? That's a really good question, and I would say that's a case by case, because and that's very personal because you. You, I wouldn't know until I was actually in the situation with the connection. Well, and clearly, you must be getting all your boxes are checked. And I'm just saying. And Korea. 
I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> and, and, you know, the... I'm all red faced now. <laughs> she really is. And I think for each person, that importance might be different. So it, it would be person to person. You know, because but, for some people to have nine out of the ten boxes checked is, is what... That's like, you know, they've only had three checked in their life. So that nine, they're like, I am golden. Wow. Um, right? But for other people, they've they've honed their intentions for that relationship. And they're like, these ten core are what I must have. And they're going to go, mm, uh, that's too but bad. But we're talking about intimacy now. Yeah. We're talking about intimacy. I'm not speaking about even finances. Um, so so what this person is saying is that, okay, if the finances aren't great, I mean, I'm okay. And if, you know, um, if uh, they snore... You know what? I will learn to drown it out. Right. Um, if they, if they're ma if they're a little rough around the edges, we'll smooth them out as the you know as the as life goes on. For me personally, I, I don't know. I guess I'm okay. asking you. I guess I'm asking them. You know, out there that's watching. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know. So again, expectations. Okay. So do you water that down? No. And, and let's say it's you know because it's let's say it's something that plays heavy in your life. You know, you okay. really love that intimate connection. So you know, what do you do with that? My answer would be, it would have to be a no. We end, and this is why, because in my experience, what is happening in the intimate realm mm -hmm. is a mirror of what's happening here. So. To me, it would t be telling me that I'm not seeing something, something else is missing. Okay. That I'm not quite picking up on or seeing yet, and it's showing up over here. But and see, it it's interesting you're going to yourself, because I'm saying your partner, the partner that you're with. I'm not talking about me missing something. I'm saying something's missing in the relationship. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Right? There's something, and it's manifesting in our connection physically, intimately, affection, you know? Really? And so whatever it is, maybe I cannot see. I'm like, I don't, I can't understand why we're not. What if you're not compatible? Well, then that's also part of that. It's going to show up in the other side of the relationship at some point is what I'm saying. And I'm not going to want, well, I'll end up wanting out eventually anyway. So to me, that's a big red flag. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. I think so. You have I to mean, be compatible. I, well, I, or at least working i don't know there is that's a that's a big that it's that's a big one because it's like mm -hmm. you know what you know what if you absolutely love and adore this person then friends, i get hello. The, then i guess it wouldn't matter <laughs> but friends yeah friends friends friend zone frenzy that's true <laughs> friend zone I and mean, that's what friends are for <laughs> if I, right friends are not if you don't want the intimacy, like if you don't have the, in then might as well be a friend, like you and me, <laughs> right? I mean, seriously, what? <laughs> I think I'm, some, I think I'm in agreement with that. <laughs> that was so devilish, but it's so true. I think it just becomes your friend. It's like. A wonderful you, friend. A no, friend. like yeah. your best I friend, mean it. right? Yes. But then, isn't your best friend supposed to be the person that you, you know, are like, ooh, you know, with and love and you're intimate with and share all of your things with, uh, you know? I don't even know the answer to this question. I thought I, I did. Like, you know well, what I mean? Because everybody really goes, did. he was my best friend, but they didn't even get it. Give it times. Time for them to be best friends and then lovers usually, That's right? That's true. So I think that we have that idea out there. Like we have to be best friends with our mates. Yeah. But I think you can be, you have your best friends and you have your mate. That's true. And you're also, and, and obviously in that relationship, there is a level of friendship. Of course. It has to be. Of course. And maybe even more, this person should have your back. That's true. And be they your ride they to were, die. die. No, that is very true. Um, I do um, think that the people that are in relationships and are also each other's best friends are the most fortunate and blessed yeah. people out there because there are some amazing relationships out there, but I, they mm -hmm. maybe if you dissect it or if they looked at it, they would say, you know, I don't really consider them my best friend. They're my friend. 
But for those special relationships out there where, you know, you're each other's best friends, mm -hmm. I think are amazing, which will pool into tomorrow's episode about soulmates. The Irish call it Anamkara. And there's a book on it. And it's it's soul, like soul kindred friends. And it to which be, we won't talk about today. No, it can be girlfriend Tomorrow. or like Tomorrow. a male. Tomorrow. That's all I'm saying. We, we got to get this out before... Um, we say goodbye. Um, so Queen Challenge, we're gonna just keep pushing this, okay? We're gonna keep pushing it like an enema, okay? Us. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna like keep pushing. Enema? Yep, yep. Because Ooh. okay, because you guys, no one's come on. Do it now. You need to do That's it. They close. will. They will. You guys, come it's on. Fun. It's fun. It's so much fun. fun. Find your queen dom. Get out there and vote. We are at forty-eight days and ticking. Tick, 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 tick. Get out there and vote vote and vote please do that um so so many prayers going out there for yeah. um those hit it, getting hit and pummeled by you know um hurricane sally uh the fires they just keep on um raging they keep raging and we'll just keep fighting the good fight and getting into good trouble uh, if there's anything that we can do to help support um mm -hmm. if you need anything please hit us hit us up at womanstrong.org we are there. Um, to hear, we're here to listen. We're here to do whatever we can to help support you in this time. We mean what we say and we say what we mean. So please do that um, because we, we come from different backgrounds, but we know mm -hmm. what it's like to be in need and to have angels that spirit us along the way. So uh, we would tell you to continue to be bold, be blessed, be beautiful. And on a postscript note, there is no amount of money that will bring Brianna Taylor back. Mm -hmm. And I think justice still needs to happen. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about that for right now. But you don't get to pay off and sweep this under the rug. She was a warrior, she was a first responder. She deserves better. We all would. Mm -hmm. She's our sister. And so let's fight the good fight where that is concerned. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And on that note, we shall see you tomorrow, Queens. Love you. Ciao. You know this is not going to turn off. This is not going to turn off. What? It never does. It never does.